Are you guys tired of me talking about The Flash yet? I hope not. I, I really, I really hope not, because I really like talking about the show, and honestly, I, I need your views for validation. This show can't go on without your validation. Are you an everyday nerd? Hit that subscribe button and turn on notifications so that you don't miss the next episode. Yo, welcome to your everyday nerd, the show where if you don't subscribe, I'm gonna have to create a time room and kill myself and create an evil Zack Snyder, which will have another YouTube channel, which will post really, really bad videos. So, you know. Only true Flash fans understand what I'm talking about here. I'm your host, Zack Snyder, and today's adaptation Saturday. Happy Saturday. On Saturdays, we talk about comic book media. I promise, I promise that Saturday isn't Flash Day. I know that's all I've been talking about on Saturdays. It just so happens to be that I finally, finally got caught up with this show, and I wanted to talk about each of the seasons because I had different things to say about it. But I promise after this episode, we're going to go straight into some more comic book media. That's right. We're diving right into Riverdale. I'm just kidding. We're, we're saving Riverdale for 2019. Today, we're talking about The Flash Season 3. I mentioned last week that I was concerned that The Flash peaked early. Season 2 was so good that I honestly didn't think it could get any better. And, well, I got to be honest with you guys. I was right. Season 3 is not as good as Season 2. In fact, it's not even close. Now, I don't hate it like a lot of people do, but I do think that there were some big issues that could have made the season better. So let's talk about it. There's only one thing I know about life. Ah! I know some things happen by chance. And some things happen because we make them happen. The Flash is an interesting show. Interesting in the way that season one was really good, season two was even better, and then season three just kind of dipped from there. Now I can't talk about this season completely without talking about spoilers, so you have been warned, spoilers in this video. Okay. But basically, season three had some really great ideas. Unfortunately, it was the execution of these ideas that I and a lot of other people seem to have problems with. I don't think that season three was awful. In fact, I did enjoy it. There was just some major issues in the execution that could have been better. Like season two, season three had a rocky start. In season two, the first nine episodes were okay, but there was a little bit too much of a focus on the drama aspects rather than the sci-fi or superhero elements that people go to for this show. The character Zoom was introduced, but it wasn't until the later half of the season that really followed through on the Zoom plot. The first part of season three had some different faults. For starters, this season revolves entirely around Flashpoint. Now, if you don't know anything about Flashpoint, which you obviously wouldn't know since you don't know jack about DC. Oh, sorry. <laughs> I just really love this comment on my Titans review. Apparently, you should go into a pilot of a new TV show about comic books with a ton of comic book knowledge. You need to know everything there is about the characters because if you ask questions that they don't give answers to in the show, but the answers are in the comic book, then, then there's something wrong with you. Anyways, in 2011, Flashpoint was a DC comic book event that would radically change the status quo for the DC universe and lead up to the massively controversial DC relaunch, The New 52. I actually read the five issue main storyline of Flashpoint the other day, so I'll be doing a separate episode of Your Everyday Nerd on that. But essentially, Barry Allen goes back in time to stop his mother from being killed by the reverse Flash. This drastically alters the timelines to the point where Bruce Wayne doesn't become Batman, instead it's his father that becomes Batman. Aquaman and Wonder Woman end up taking over parts of the Earth and they go into a war against each other, and Barry Allen never becomes a speedster. It's an interesting story that I do want to talk about how I particularly feel on the comic book side of things in another episode. But what's important here is that season three of The Flash, the TV show, happens because Barry Allen is in a moment of weakness. After his father is killed by Zoom, it causes him to go back in time to save his mother, rewrite history, and then realize that, oh sh the timeline's royally screwed up again. I'm going to need to go back and let my mother die again so that history can be the way it's supposed to be. Now, mind you, the Flashpoint event is extremely important to the current state of DC Comics. While it was only five issues for the main story, there's another 50 plus issues of tie-ins that really develops this world after Barry messes up. So you're probably thinking, well, for the TV show, it'll probably be an entire season that focuses on this, right? Well, um, in a season with 23 episodes, the Flashpoint event occurs for a total of, drumroll please, one episode. 
It's, uh, it's, it's just the pilot. That's it. Now, the second episode and really the rest of the season deal with the repercussions of Barry messing up the timeline and then fixing it, which is fine. My biggest issue happens to be with the changes that occur after Flashpoint happens. These changes are fairly small, except for the big one, which we'll talk about later, but they occur to Team Flash in a very weird way. Now, I am glad that we get this personal side of everybody. If it was just like the president changed, then it wouldn't be as impactful as the things that do happen to Team Flash. My problem with these changes are, I've gotten so used to the characters in Team Flash for the past two seasons, and now they've been changed up just enough to make me feel uneasy. Here's what I'm talking about. When Barry changes the timeline, Cisco's brother dies. Now this definitely sucks for Cisco, but Cisco basically turns into an emo b and he hates Barry for a good part of the season. Cisco is also one of my favorite characters in the show, so to see him just in turmoil over for this long is very jarring. We also get Iris and Joe being pissed off at each other over something that happened in the beginning of season two. It felt unnatural and it didn't make any sense to me. Caitlyn ends up getting powers, i.e. she turns into Killer Frost, which is probably the best change that is made. I, I do like Killer Frost to a certain extent, but um, Caitlyn's character is also my least favorite in the entire show. And probably the biggest change that I didn't care for as far as Team Flash goes was the introduction of the character Julian. Now, his character is important to the season three storyline. The problem is that he's extremely obnoxious for the majority of the season. He does get some character development, which is dope, but apparently he doesn't get enough character development because when season four comes around, this dude just gets up and goes back to his hometown in England. I mean, to be honest, I am glad that the character is gone. I really didn't care for him, but why take an entire season to introduce a character, give him a little bit of a character arc, make him an asshole and then make him better and then just leave him for the next season. It, it, just, it just didn't make any sense to me. So these are the small things. But the big thing that Flashpoint does is it creates the big bad villain of the season, Savitar. You may serve the Speed Force Flash, but I rule it. You are only a man, but I am a god, your god. I am Savitar. We find out fairly early that Savitar is the big bad of the season, but that doesn't excuse my problems with the other villains in the season. For starters, I was under the impression that the rival was going to be the main villain at first, and uh, he's not only super unintimidating, but he has a really dumb suit. Nevertheless, he wasn't actually the main villain. The next guy that I thought was going to be the main villain was Alchemy, and I still don't like Alchemy. I understand why he's present in the show, his identity is important to the storyline, it's because of Alchemy that Wally West becomes Kid Flash, which is dope but it has the same problem that I predicted after season two. Alchemy is not even close to being as intimidating as Zoom. Fortunately though, he's not the main villain either. It's Savitar. Now, if you haven't seen the show yet and you don't want to be spoiled, here's the time to run away. I'm going to put a timestamp on the screen so I, you don't get spoiled on Savitar's identity because I got spoiled. It actually made the season better. So maybe if you want to be spoiled, that's fine, but I'm going to put a timestamp on here so you don't have to hear the spoiler. Okay. So, Savitar ends up being Barry Allen, which I actually thought was a really cool twist. His timeline is extremely convoluted, but essentially his life is a closed time loop. When Barry created Flashpoint, he somehow created the existence of Savitar. And the way that he is supposed to defeat Savitar is the way that Savitar is created. I'm not going to go into the specifics about how all this works, but as cool as Savitar is, and as much as I did like him, his existence in the show creates a lot of problems with season three. For starters, there are definitely some plot holes in his timeline. Again, not going into specific because I'd be here all day, but for a show that is not grounded entirely in science fiction, it made no sense why the show didn't better explain Savitar's existence. Not only this, but the ending of the Savitar arc made no sense whatsoever. We are told that the reason Barry Allen becomes Savitar is because he sees his girlfriend, Iris, killed in front of him. Now, the person that kills Iris is, in fact, Savitar. So, Savitar created Savitar. Again, it's confusing, 
but Barry is able to see in the future and he sees how Iris is killed. So him and Team Flash do everything they can to prevent her death. Her death is then prevented. Therefore, defeating the closed time loop and it should be the very thing that destroys Savitar's existence. Except it doesn't. See, Savitar should disappear immediately after we find out that Iris isn't dead. Immediately. Like, it's a paradox for him to be alive now. And yet, he just continues living for a good chunk of the episode. They also do this thing where they try to have a redemption arc for Savitar. And that makes no sense to me because Homie just killed one of your friends. It doesn't matter though, because then he blows up Star Labs because it's a finale, sure. But then he decides to replicate himself throughout all space and time. He wants to be a god. The thing about the finale is that for the first half, it's actually really, really good. I really enjoyed it. But then for the second half, it just completely shits the bed. And there's two things that any season of TV should have. It should have a really good premiere and it should have a really good finale. If those two things aren't met, the season ends up suffering for it. But here's the really weird contradictory part of season three. It has some major issues with the main villain. It has some major issues with other villains. It has some major issues with the entire plot of it. However, I still really enjoyed a lot of episodes. Now, a lot of these episodes don't have to do with Savitar, which is kind of funny, but here were some of my favorites of the season. There's episode 18 called Abracadabra. Ever since I read an issue of Flash Rebirth, I immediately loved this character and it was pretty great to see him in the show. Then there's also episodes 13 and 14 about Gorilla Grodd, and it's basically Planet of the Apes meets The Flash. I thought I was going to hate this because I actually didn't like Gorilla Grodd in season 1 or 2, but I really, really enjoyed this instead. We also get another episode of The Speed Force, which I loved. Episode 19, The Once and Future Flash, has a future version of Barry, and I really liked that episode. And controversially, I did like episode 17 called Duets, which was basically a musical episode. I do like musicals to a certain extent. I am a musician after all. But what I liked most about this episode was the character of Music Meister. And I hope to see him again in the future because he has a ton of potential. What was weird about this episode though was that it was entirely filler and it should have happened earlier in the season since we were getting hyped for Savitar. But before I wrap everything up, I do need to talk about the worst problem I had with Flash Season 3. It isn't the way the Flash one was handled. It wasn't the Savitar timeline. It wasn't even the finale. It was this girl right here. Magenta. <sighs> Only three episodes in, we're cursed with a metahuman that's so awful, she makes Multiplex looks great. And the best part of it is, she's played by Joey King, who's known for such underrated classics as Slender Man and Wish Upon. Basically, this character was just as bad, if not worse, than Raven from the new Titan show. Uh oh, here comes the dislikes. Don't talk bad about Titans. I gotta remember. I gotta remember. But anyways, I think season three of The Flash is just as big as a paradox as the timeline that we're being presented with. It has some really great ideas, but they're not executed as well as they should be. It has some really great moments, but it also has some really dumb ones. My favorite aspects of this season continues to be the main reason I keep watching The Flash, and that's the character interactions. They are really great, and without those, I honestly probably would have stopped watching at this point. So I'm glad that the writers are continuing to prioritize character interactions and relationships. I don't think that season three is horrible, I just think it has some glaring issues that hindered some of my enjoyment of it. Fortunately, I did move on straight into Season 4, and we're going to talk about that next week. Well, I guess I'm a sellout now. In today's world, everybody needs a website. If you're a content creator like myself, you need a website. If you own a business, you need a website. If your first name is Susan and you got 25 cats you want to share with the world, you need a website. But in order to have a professional sounding website, you gotta have it hosted. Here's where Bluehost comes in. Starting at just $3.99 a month, you get a free domain, you get free SSL included, one-click WordPress installs, and 24-7 support. As someone who worked in a web development company for two years, I can tell you that a lot of hosting sites make things way too complicated to put in your domain name. So having this one-click WordPress install is not only a great feature, but a huge time saver. 
Check out the link in the description box below to get your free domain name today and tell them Zach sent you. That's all the time we have for today. Thank you so much for watching. If you're a Flash fan, go ahead and hit that like button. If you're a Titans fan, go ahead and hit that dislike button. Go ahead and subscribe for more Everyday Nerd, and I will see you on Monday. Goodbye.